You haven't forgotten about the family reunion we're having this weekend, have you? You better not miss it. Hello, Mom. Of course I remember. I'll be there with Chris. We need you to help out with things once you arrive. Chris must be working so hard all the time. We must have him take some rest. Of course, I understand. I'm always willing to help out others. But I'm not sure if I can do much this time around. I was hoping you'd understand. Oh my. We can't be having that. I am your mother-in-law. You're not planning on disobeying me, are you? No, I would never. It's just that, um... I'm sure you've heard about my pregnancy, right? I'm in my final month right now. So what? Are you saying you want to slack off just because you're pregnant? Please, let me explain. Last month, I had to stay at the hospital for a while because the doctors were worried that I may have a condition called threatened premature birth. So far, it seems like everything would be fine as long as I make sure to keep myself healthy and rested. I'm sorry I can't help you out as much this time, but I hope you understand it's for our child. I don't understand a thing you're saying. But Olive, you're married to Chris. You're now both Chris's wife and my daughter, and we need all the help we can get. I will not have someone like you just laying back while her husband and mother does all the work. You didn't get married to slack off, you know? I won't allow such a thing. Now, do you remember your role here in our family, young lady? Or do I need to further explain myself? I think you are misunderstanding me, Mom. Of course I'll be helping out as usual. I'll do everything I can. But there's going to be a limit to how much I can push myself this time. So I just wanted you to know that I might not be able to help you out as much as last time. It's for the safe delivery of our child. We don't want anything to happen to her. And we don't want to push her luck either. I mean, I don't know what I'll do if something happens to the baby. I'm sure you don't want her to be in harm's way either, right? It's none of my concern. Nothing will happen to the baby as long as you make sure you're being responsible enough. But on the off chance you do harm the baby? Well, I suppose sometimes you're just unlucky. But it's not that hard to get impregnated. So I suggest you just get pregnant again. We are still expecting to see our first grandkid someday. And just because you might fall as a mother once, doesn't mean that we should also be punished by not being able to meet them anymore. Hold on, mom. What do you mean, sometimes you're just unlucky? It's not just about bad luck. It's about being careful and making sure the baby is safe. I hope I'm wrong. But you sound as if you think our baby is replaceable. This child will be the one and only first grandchild. At least. That's what I'm praying for. And that's why I'm asking you to understand. So you might go easy on me. Go easy on you? Are you implying that I'm pushing you around? Well, you kind of did that before. Remember that one time when I didn't do exactly as I was told? You shoved me to the floor and I got bruised. I know you're not always like that, but on the off chance that you're not feeling too cheerful, well, I don't want to risk it. That's why I'm telling you about my condition and hoping that you'll understand. The doctors told me that I really shouldn't push myself. That includes carrying heavy objects and running around for errands. I'm sorry I can't help out much, but please, I need your understanding. And I said that I don't understand. But, okay, what's throwing you off? If you tell me, I'll try to explain it in more detail. That's not what I mean. I mean, I don't understand why I have to listen to your petty request. Petty request? So what if you're feeling a bit under the weather? Every woman gets pregnant one day, you know. But they don't complain about it, and they certainly do not suspend their role as a wife and mother. They manage it. Why should you get special treatment just because you're in your last month of pregnancy? I say that you're being dramatic, or perhaps even a bit self-absorbed. You selfish little girl. I don't think I agree with that. Like I said, I have a condition. Maybe under normal circumstances, I could do a bit more. But I was hospitalized and the doctor specifically told me to be careful. Please, I promise I'll do my usual load once I give birth to our daughter. It's just this once. Please, mom. No, I stand by my word when I say that I don't understand why I should listen to your whining. It's not like you even come over that much. You're a guest, and we're being generous enough to take you in. Shouldn't you be on your best manners? If I were you, I'd be making sure to do all the help I can. As I previously said, 
I'll do everything to the best of my current abilities. But there's a limit, and I can't do as much this time. Then are you trying to say that I usually force you to do more than necessary? The nerve of you! Listen to yourself! I can't believe you'd imply such a horrendous thing. Mom, that's not what I meant at all. I'm not implying anything about the past. I'm just saying that given my current physical state and the limitations that come with pregnancy, I can't do as much as I used to. It's not a reflection on you or our relationship. Well, it certainly sounded like you were insinuating that I've been taking advantage of you. I've always respected your boundaries and never forced you to do anything. I'm hurt that you would think otherwise. I apologize if my words came across that way, Mom. It was not my intention to hurt you or accuse you of anything. I know you've always been considerate and respectful. I'm just expressing my own limitations and asking for understanding during this particular time. I still can't believe you. You're just a liar. You lied about all of those things so that you can get all get away with your chores, didn't you? No, no, of course not. It's just that I care so much about our baby. I don't want her to have any complications. It's also the first time I got pregnant, so I want to be extra cautious. I want to make sure everything goes fine. Please, you've been pregnant before. Why don't you understand? Oh, so now I'm the villain here, aren't I? I get it. That's what I can't stand about you. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll make sure to teach you a thing or two about manners. Be prepared. I'm looking forward to this weekend. What do you mean? Please, I can't handle too much this weekend. I've told you countless times already. Mom? Are you listening? I'll be home soon, sweetheart. How are you feeling today? Make sure to stay rested. As usual, I'll be doing all the cooking and cleaning. Is there anything you want to eat tonight? If not, I'm thinking of lasagna. Chris, can I be honest with you? Sure thing. Is something the matter? It's about this weekend. I'm kind of concerned. This weekend? So, you're worried about that visit to my parents' house? It's alright. It's just a small family reunion. So it shouldn't take too much of our time. Of course, if you start feeling ill, you could always take a rat in the guest room. And you don't have to help out around the house like usual. You always do so much for us. But you shouldn't feel obligated to do that, especially this time. Maybe. But does your mom know that? Why wouldn't she? I told her that you're 9 months pregnant already and she gave birth to me. So she should understand how tough it must be to carry a child in your stomach. Besides, there's also that talk that we had at the hospital. We should tell her about that too. I'm sure she'll take good care of you this time. I told her about it a few minutes ago, but I don't think she understands. Either that or she's not too keen on the idea of me taking a rest. There's also that incident that happened before, so I'm starting to feel concerned. You mean when she shoved you to the floor? I don't know about that, Olive. She said that it was an accident. That's what she told you and your dad? But did you see her apologize to me after that? I don't want to make any accusations, but I think she was fully aware of what she did. The doctors did tell me to stay rested, but I'm worried that if she thinks I'm slacking off, she'll start being aggressive again. Well, I see your concern. I don't know what actually happened between you two, but I guess it's true that you're gonna hurt that day. We don't want that to happen again, alright? If you're feeling worried, do you want me to tell my mom to be extra careful around you? Will you? That'd be great, Chris. Anything for you, sweetheart. Remember, no matter what happens, I'll always stay by your side to help you out. Besides, we can't risk our child getting harmed. Better safe than sorry. Make sure you don't get too stressed either. If there's anything else you need from me, just ask. I'm so glad you're such a supportive partner, Chris. Thank you. I'll do my best to keep our baby safe. You're welcome, Olive. Being a supportive partner is a responsibility gladly embrace. We're in this journey together, and I want to be there for you every step of the way. Our child's well-being is of the utmost importance to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to ensure their safety. I appreciate your dedication, Chris. It's reassuring to know that I have your unwavering support. Pregnancy can be overwhelming at times, but having you by my side makes it easier to navigate the uncertainties and challenges. That's what partners are for, Olive. We're a team, and we'll face any obstacles together. 
Remember, it's not just about the physical safety of our baby, but also your emotional well-being. Stress can have an impact on both you and the baby, so it's essential that you take care of yourself as well. You're absolutely right, Chris. I'll make sure to prioritize self-care and manage stress effectively. It's crucial for the well-being of our growing family. Your reminder is a gentle nudge for me to slow down and take care of myself, and I'm grateful for that. I'm glad you see it that way, Olive. We need to find a balance between being cautious and enjoying this precious time. Let's not forget to cherish the joyful moments and celebrate this beautiful journey we're on. Young lady, when are you going to come back? Hurry up! Those dishes aren't going to wash themselves. Are you planning on leaving them in the sink all night? Mom, please stop! Isn't there anything else you want to say? Do you not understand what you've done? What? If there's something you want to say, why don't you just spit it out? Mom, I've told you that I can't push myself. I even told you the moment we arrived, just to remind you. And yet, you still act as though you can push me around. You made me do so many of your chores. And maybe that on its own isn't so bad. But then, the minute I sit on the couch to take a little rest, you kick me in the stomach! I can't believe you! I don't know what to say! You're crazy, Mom! I think you're actually insane! Well, if I'm insane, then I suppose you must be psychotic. What did you tell Chris behind my back? Because now he thinks that I've been unfair to you. What garbage story did you make up, huh? Why would you do such a thing? I didn't make anything up. I just told him the truth about what happened. Do you understand that I'm at the hospital right now? Have you seen the shock on everyone's faces when they saw what happened? They were shocked because you were arrogant enough to slack off during our family reunion. And now you're sent off to the hospital. So I suppose it's even more time for you to run away from work. I didn't do anything wrong, lady. You should be ashamed of yourself. I can't believe it. Do you actually believe anything you're saying? And even after all you've done, there's not even a single bit of apology. I don't think you feel any remorse either, right? I'm appalled. I knew you didn't like me, but I didn't think you would actually be such a horrible person. I see what's happening here. You're blaming me again. You think I'm in the wrong. Well, let me give you a piece of my mind. Then, because you're just being lazy and selfish again. Really? What is wrong with you, Olive? I've never met such an ungrateful, selfish girl in my life. If anyone should be apologizing, it should be you. Think of all the trouble you've caused me. Think of all the stress I've been putting up with. Being pregnant is no excuse for slacking off. Not in my household. No one gave you permission to take a break. If you don't want to get kicked in the stomach, then you shouldn't have been lazy. You deserved it. That's it. I can't take this anymore. That was the last straw, Mom. I thought I should be nice because you're my mother-in-law, but I was wrong. I won't forgive you for what you did, Mom. I hope you regret your choice and all of your past actions, because there's going to be some bad news for you. What? Why would I need forgiveness from you? What are you planning now? Mom, you kicked me in the stomach when there was still a baby in my womb. We had to call an ambulance. I'm in the hospital because of what you did. But not only are you not worried about me or offering me an apology, you're accusing me of deserving it. It's the truth. Don't pretend you don't know that. I see. You still stand by everything you've done. But what's worse is that you haven't even bothered to check if the baby's alright. You're a monster! I'm sure the baby is fine. You won't be able to see her anymore. Oh well, it's not my fault. And you make sure to tell everyone that it's not my fault. Don't get me wrong, the baby is fine, but you and I will never be seeing each other again. Naturally, the baby won't see you either. I can't risk it. She's safe? God, you scared me for a second. She's my grandchild. I will be seeing her. In fact, I'll bring her up. Don't worry, she'll be in good hands. I don't think so. I'm shocked, Mom. I didn't think that you were that kind of person. Were you always like this? Is it because you and Olive aren't technically related? Excuse me? That's me. I thought you were just hard on Olive because you were training her to get used to parenting. That's what you told me at least. That was a lie, wasn't it? And I bought it. I was so stupid. 
I'm sorry that I didn't believe anything Olive said sooner, but now I know what was really going on. Chris, what are you doing with Olive's phone? She showed me, and all the things you've been saying to her. Really, Mom? Honestly, I can't believe it. I still don't want to believe it. But I can't risk you hurting her anymore. Now that I finally know, you were much harder on her than I ever imagined. It's unforgivable, Mom. I'm sorry, but it just is. Chris, please. This is all a misunderstanding. I can explain all the details later, but you have to believe me. I'm your mother, and you know how loving I was when you were a child. I will never harm your daughter, and I will never harm Olive either. I don't think I believe you, Mom. Unlike the last time you assaulted Olive, I saw what happened today. We all saw what you did. There's no excuse. I don't want to think that you're my mother anymore. To be honest, I'm really ashamed. I don't think I even want to see your face anymore. So I'll probably cut ties with you like Olive, just so you know. What are you saying, Chris? You're being lied to by that woman. You can't just abandon your mother. After all you've done, maybe it's the only option. You've harmed both my wife and my daughter. That's not something a mother should be doing. Actually, it's not something anyone should be doing. I don't want my kid around you. I don't think it's safe for her. If you never hesitated to kick a pregnant woman, then I'm worried the same way apply for a newborn child. You're actually thinking I'd kick a baby? Give me a break! The baby was fine. Nothing happened. There shouldn't be any consequences. Nothing happened? Seriously? I'm trying to be diplomatic here, but I don't think we can see eye to eye. Mom, please don't come near my family. Chris, you can't be serious. I'm your mother. You listen to what I say. So what if you are my mom? If anything, shouldn't that mean you have even more reason to understand what Olive was going through? You did give birth to me, didn't you? I didn't think it would become such a big deal. I thought Olive was just being dramatic. You know how young girls can be. I thought she was overreacting. Yeah, sure. I don't see a point in talking anymore. You're probably just gonna make up excuses. I don't want to hear it. Don't expect to see me anymore. You're not actually going to cut ties with me, are you? Chris, we're family. We can't just abandon each other. That doesn't excuse being a bad person. Families come with responsibilities too. This conversation is going nowhere. I'll be handing Olive back her phone, but don't even try to ridicule her again. It won't do you any good. Chris, sweetie, why don't we have a family discussion then? Just come back home after you're done visiting the hospital. You still need to get all your stuff too. Might as well talk things out before you make any rush decisions, right? That home might not be your home for much longer. Chris is calling his dad. You're Olive, aren't you? How dare you mess with my family? I'll never forgive you for this. You don't have to. The feeling is mutual. You'll never forgive me, and I'll never forgive you. But as long as we don't have to see each other anymore, I think everything will be fine. It seems like Chris has decided on cutting ties with you, so we won't have to worry about seeing each other by accident either. Why would Chris be calling his father? He said that he's going to explain everything to him. And by everything, he means everything. Oh dear! Your husband has been kind to me, unlike you. And I still remember the shock on his face when he saw you kicking me. After all this, I'm not sure what he'll think of you anymore. Maybe he'll kick you out of the house. I'm sorry for being mean, but I secretly hope that he will. That way, we can visit his house with our daughter. That, and it'll also be nice to think that you get what you deserve. It'll make me feel better for enduring everything if you get abandoned by both your son and husband. He'll never do such a thing. How long do you think we've been married? He'll take my side. Chris came back. Apparently, your husband wants to apologize in your place. He's heading to the hospital right now. I think we'll be discussing the future of our household without you. Why am I not involved? This is about me and you. Tell Chris to pick up his phone. We have some talking to do. No, I'm not going to follow your orders anymore. You're my daughter-in-law. Do as you're told. Daughter-in-law or not, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And don't even try to get all the others involved in this. They all saw what you did, and I don't think anyone will be willing to stand by you. This time, you went too far. Everyone saw what sort of person you actually are. 
a violent abuser. What? I am not an abuser. Revenge is sweet, mother-in-law. Especially after everything I had to go through. I'm looking forward to hearing about what happens to you. Oh, Olive. If what you want is an apology, then I'll give you that. Just let me see my grandchild. Apology? Is that supposed to make up for everything? It's not just about the grandchild, Mom. It's about the years of emotional manipulation and the pain you've caused. I can't simply forget all that and pretend everything is fine just because you want to see your grandchild. Olive, I never meant to cause you pain. I may have made mistakes in the past, but I've always cared about you and our family. I want the chance to make amends and be a part of our grandchild's life. Nope, not gonna happen. Please don't ever contact me again. Our family will be perfectly fine without you. Please, don't shut me out completely. Don't let them do this to me, Olive! After Chris told him what had been going on behind the scenes with me and Mrs. Beverly, his father was deeply shocked and disappointed. As previously mentioned, he came rushing to the hospital. He apologized over and over again for what Mrs. Beverly did, even though he didn't do anything wrong. After some discussions, Chris's father decided to get a divorce. They've been married for a long time, but that only meant that he had time to notice some red flags in their relationship. He stayed married for Chris's sake, but after what had happened, he finally decided it was time to get divorced. All of the other family members didn't get involved in the conversation, but no one objected to the end result either. Several days later, Mrs. Beverly lost her husband, her son, and was kicked out of her house. And just as I said, she never got to see her grandchild because we made sure to keep her away from her.